Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to start SQL Server Profiler Trace automatically after SQL Services uh, SQL Server Services restart. So we'll be going through uh, these learnings, and th these are step by step to accomplish SQL Server Profiler Auto Trace on when SQL Server basically starts the services start. First, we're going to go ahead and create our sample trace using a SQL Server Profiler. We'll be using GUI version of SQL Server Profiler and get our trace going. Whatever the event we wanted to capture using SQL Server Profiler, we will select that. And after we select that, we're going to go ahead and export the trace definition, whatever the events that we selected in order to troubleshoot an issue. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and export it in a trace definition to a file. And we're going to go ahead and after that load that trace definition file in SQL Server Management Studio and create a stored procedure out of that T-SQL script that we just um, got it from trace definition. Once we do that, we want to go ahead and mark that stored procedure to run at start time, you have to configure that in SQL Server, and and then the, we will be looking at the configuration option, uh, how to scan for startup pr um, uh, procedure option in SQL Server. You have to, this has to be enabled by default. It is the value of this scan for startup procedure uh, is disabled. Uh, but uh, when we run, when we mark trace uh, stored procedure to run at startup then it's going to automatically, you don't have to manually go ahead and um, manually go and configure that. It'll uh, take care of itself. So let's go ahead and execute these six steps one by one. So here's uh, my SQL Server. Right here, Dynamics AX is, uh, dev is my C, uh, uh, SQL Server and SQL Server instance is SQL Test. So we're going to go ahead and click on Tools and click on SQL Server Profiler. And this is what we're going to use, the GUI version, to create our trace definition. So we're going to go ahead and fire up SQL Server Profiler. This is the server I want to connect. So we're, we're going to go ahead and connect. And trace temp, uh, template is, in this particular demo, we're going to uh, basically basically trace store procedure uh, related issues. And let's say that we have a store procedure and it is giving an error and we wanted to tra trace what exactly it's doing and where it's throwing an error. And we'll be using basically a template uh, just for to save some time. You can go ahead and create your event. Uh, um, uh, basically uh, go in events and select your events based on whatever the need of the trace that you are going to go and do it. So I'm going to name my trace troubleshoot SP. So this is my trace name store procedure troubleshoot store procedure and I'm going to go ahead and use T-SQL store procedures. So it will automatically load all the events related that I need in order to troubleshoot my store procedure. So I went ahead and used template instead of uh, um, instead of you know going in there and selecting my particular uh, events. So uh, just to save the time. And uh, you, always, you already have an option where you wanted to save your trace file. Uh, you, it's always a good idea that if you spend a lot of time creating your uh, uh, trace, then it's always a good idea to save your file so that you can uh, trace files so that you can go ahead and load that uh, trace file and troubleshoot uh, any trace, uh, any issue related to store procedure or any event that you have selected. So we're going to go ahead and click on run. And as soon as it started running, we can go ahead and click on file and we're going to export our trace definition. When I say trace definition, that means all the events we selected. So we're going to go ahead and click on SQL Server 2005 onward. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And this will give us option to save our uh, trace file, uh, trace definition uh, in a T-SQL script. After that, we're going to use that to load that T-SQL script and create a stored procedure out of that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this name, uh, SP Troubleshoot Trace Definition. We're going to go ahead and save. It's going to say it's already existed. That's okay. Yes. And it is completed. Once we have basically exported the trace definition, we can go ahead and stop our trace and get out of SQL Server Profiler. And let's go ahead and load our uh, trace definition that we just created. Right here is SP Troubleshoot Trace Definition, and we're going to go ahead and connect with this. Up here, this is the trace definition. You can always add events, turn them on and off. You can add more events right here. 
So this is our trace definition. This is pretty easy to create as you saw. Right here is the file name. This is going to be the file name of your trace. Every time SQL Server restarts, it's going to give uh, a name to your trace and that file name is going to be here. Now there is one issue if we just give the file name right here, the path, this is going to be your path. Let's say that this is C backslash uh, um, my trace is the trace uh, file name. So the issue is that uh, if we leave it just like this, next time when it comes and uh, create the trace file, it's going to give us error saying that this file already existed. So it cannot create the trace. So in order to uh, avoid that error, what we're going to do, um, you have your own options that how you wanted to basically name your traces, but I will put date and time uh, right here. Uh, in front of my trace, that's my uh, uh, file name, and then I wanted to uh, prefix with date and time. And I already, I already have created that, so I'm going to go ahead and load and quickly show you. Nothing has really changed, and um, it has all it did was to uh, create a store procedure out of that, and took care of this issue of having the same file name. So let's go ahead and load that. right here so what I did was just create a store procedure and uh, a store procedure name is SP trouble trace and right here is just as I added as and rest everything remains same except this right up here I can connect I I, I, ch I put uh, date and time up here you can use the same script and I'll put the script on our blog so you can just copy and paste this and what it's going to do is prefix with the date and time that way we won't run into any issue of same file name and it will not have any issue uh, when it recreates the trace after we restart the SQL services services so right here is the path where it's going to store all my trace file you can change this path according to your uh, where wherever you wanted to put your trace file so it's pretty easy let's go ahead and create this store procedure as you can see it's a, a, a command completed successfully let's see that if it has created our store procedure and we're going to go ahead and refresh here is our store procedure now since we have created the store procedure let's go back to our points right here we have completed until step four next we're going to do is mark this store procedure to run at startup and then we will see how to configure I'll show you that um, real quick so we're gonna close this our store procedure is created that's good so I'm going to open another script and this is a trace configuration so um, up here is the store procedure SP underscore proc option and store procedure name whatever your store procedure name is and startup you wanted to do the startup true and if you look at this one right here the configuration option for SQL Server um, the by default this scan for startup uh, procedures what it does is when SQL Server restarts is scan uh, through the SQL Server and see if any C, uh, store procedure is marked for me to start in the beginning. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to accomplish is that we created a store procedure trace store procedure. We want to start that trace every time SQL Server services restart. So what we're going to do is first to look at the option whether the configuration is on or not. So we're going to go ahead and run it. And as you can see right here, the value is zero. This value needs to be one, but you don't have have to um, basically uh, um, change this value right now as soon as you will run this store procedure right here it will uh, create uh, it will put this change this value to one right away and that one means that every time SQL Server starts it's going to scan for any store procedure that has uh, um, you know that that is there for it to start after the services restart so we're gonna go ahead and run this right command here sorry we need to put our store procedure name right here 
that stored procedure needs to be existed. So we're going to go ahead and run this command and command completed successfully. And let's go ahead and check that if this configuration has changed. As you can see, the value is one. As soon as we ran this store procedure, the value is changed. So just wanted to show you that you don't have to basically manually go ahead and change this configuration. You can, you have an option, but you don't have to really because this will take care of itself. So uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and execute this store procedure. That means as soon as we execute this store procedure, it's going to run the trace for us. And then we will, let's first look at that, how many traces are running on this server. As you can see, there are only one trace that's a system trace that's running right now. So we're going to go ahead and execute this store procedure. All right, store procedure is executed. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, traces now. Select asterisk from sys.traces. As you can see that our right here is our sta uh, um, startup script that trace is running. As you can see, it's a 28th. Uh, and March 2015 and time up here is 501 so 17 1 that is time that's how it's going to name your traces every time it restarts so let's go ahead and restart the SQL services and see that if this trace comes back for us so we're gonna go ahead and restart our SQL services let me copy this All right, our SQL services are starting. As soon as they come up, we're going to see that if this trace mm -hmm. is uh, enabled. And uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and basically make this false as well and restart SQL services one more time to see if that works for us or not. So let me refresh this. We're connected back. We're going to go ahead and click on new query. Just put this option right here and go ahead and see the traces. As you can see, the trace is running and it has different time, 1, uh, 17, or 2, 5, or 2. So it just started. Let's go ahead and uh, go a little further. We're going to go ahead and make this, uh, configure this not true, false, so it won't start in the beginning. So we're going to go ahead and configure this store procedure to false. Okay, and let's look at this option again. As you can see, the value is zero again. So let's go ahead and uh, restart our SQL Server services one more time and see if our trace starts, if it's really working. All right, let's refresh one more time. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the, let's click on new query, paste and run it. As you can see, only one trace is running right here. So that's the system trace. So basically uh, it's working for us. Um, and uh, let's go back. We have learned how to create sample trace and then we did the trace definition to a file created a stored procedure out of that and then after that we marked that stored procedure to run at the start time and then look at the configuration options of startup procs options in SQL Server and I hope this video helps.